Cal and welcome to my world. It's been a little while with videos I know but finally doing it. Since I reached 50 recent video games pickups videos I've decided to do a top 10 looking back at my top 10 favourite best pickups from the previous 50 videos. Then after this video we can carry on with 51, 52 all the way up and then when we get to 100 I'll do a top 10 for the next 50 videos basically. So, uh, just a quick note, I will not be including anything from unboxing videos. There's been a few pickups I've done just as unboxing, like special editions. I uh, won't be doing from uh, the fan mail, like I've got the Xbox 360, fantastic, yes. Uh, that won't be included, nor will any of my, um, what are they called, uh, Holy Grails. I think there was two of those maybe, maybe just one. Yeah, so that won't be included, even though obviously some fantastic stuff there. So, just going to do top 10 from the 50 recent video games, pickups videos that have happened so far. So, let's get started. Number 10. So, from episode number 43, we have WWF No Mercy. Okay, so let me explain this one. Firstly, I've owned this game on its own for... Uh, Let's see, uh, 12 years now? I think that's how long I've been collecting. I, I always get a bit confused with how long it's been. I think it was 2009 I started. So, yeah, 12 years. And one of the first systems I did get was an N64. In fact, I'm pretty sure someone sent me that along with a bundle of their games. No mercy was included because they, they were a wrestling fan as well. But the problem was it was the first release of it here in Europe. And if you know anything about that, you'll know that it had a slight bug in which save files would randomly delete. Yeah. So I finally, finally, after all those years, decided to go after the, uh, the revision of that and get the one where the save file actually works and doesn't delete. I know, crazy, right? So after some searching, um, I believe this box I actually bought um, was... Yeah, I ended up with like another copy that still wasn't what it said it was, but then I got the copy that did and it works. And yeah, basically, so now I have a boxed version, it doesn't have the manual. I might try and pick that up at some point later. But I did finally get this version here. <sighs> I'm killing Mario again, happens every video now. I don't know why, he never used to fall over. <coughs> Stop it, Mario. No. No. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, pull out, you see the, uh, the Euro Dash 1? Yeah, so that basically means it is the, uh, the first revision, or whatever, and it actually works, and doesn't delete the save. So I'm very happy to pick this up, because it is often claimed as being one of the very best wrestling games. I have never felt that way, because I've never really been able to play it properly, because I couldn't go through season mode or anything like that, which is supposed to be really fun. I couldn't bother creating characters, couldn't unlock characters, because it would all just be deleted the next time I loaded up the game. So, very happy to have finally got this in my collection. Number 9. Dragon, Dragon, got the Dragon, Dragon Ball Z, Attack of the Saiyans on Nintendo DS! Yes, so this was episode 28, where I picked this one up. And it's one of my favourite Nintendo DS games. I'm pretty sure I've done a top 10 uh, favourite Nintendo DS games list at some point. And yes, this is indeed on it. So back in the day when I had a Nintendo DS, uh, well, well, I still obviously do, but uh, when it first came out, I couldn't really afford games that often, so I bought an R4 card and would download them from the interwebs. I know. I know, and this was one of the games I downloaded, and I loved it. Why? It's a classic, traditional JRPG, turn-based, that I absolutely adore. It's got fantastic sprites and everything, but it's set in the Dragon Ball Z universe. And, of course, it goes through the first saga with uh, the, the Saiyans attacking, leading up to Vegeta. And it is fantastic. It really, really is. All the characters are there that you'd expect to play from that time period. You've got all the different attacks and stuff when they level up. It's just fantastic. Lots of locations you know. A couple of new ones sort of added to kind of pad out the story because not that much technically happens um, in the, the whole Saiyan saga. It's just a case of Raditz shows up, they fight, Goku dies, 
everybody trains, Napa and Vegeta show up, they fight, people die, the end. <laughs> yeah, so they do pan it out with searching for Dragon Balls and going to different locations, you got Goku down in hell and things like that. It's all really, really, really fun, I absolutely adore this game. And it kept going up in price, so I finally picked it up before it shot up in price. I think it's gone up even more now, which is insane. But the worst thing is, it never did get a sequel. Yeah, they teased it at the end with Freezer, and we never got it. I would love to see a return of this series with a classic turn-based JRPG. With the turn-based JRPG system. Yeah, so, yeah, one of my favourite pickups. Fantastic game. Buy it, everybody! Buy it! Number 8. Dragon Quest 11. <laughs> yeah, so Dragon Quest 11. Echoes of an Elusive Age uh, edition of Light Version here on the PlayStation 4. Now, I'm a massive, massive, massive fan of Dragon Quest, as I'm sure most of you know. And, spoiler, not the only Dragon Quest game on this list. <laughs> yeah, but despite the fact that I love Dragon Quest and I finally got into the series, this was the first game that I was able to play brand new as it came out. Everything else I played after the fact, because I was late to the series, and we had to wait um, a bunch of years between Dragon Quest IX and Dragon Quest XI, because X is a, a, an MMO style game, only released in Japan, so we never got it. So yeah, this was my first brand new experience with Dragon Quest, and it is one of the greatest games I've ever played in my life, truth be told. It was my game of the year when it came out on PS4, it was my game of the year the following year when it came out on Nintendo Switch, and yeah, it's just one of my favourite games. I absolutely adore this game, but here is the original version on the PlayStation 4. Yes, it doesn't have the orchestral soundtrack. Yes, we don't have the 2D mode, nor do we have the extra content that we did get in the Switch version, and then re-released again on PS4 and even Xbox. Uh, but yeah... This first experience was still fantastic to me. I still absolutely adore this game. And let's see, what this was from episode 32, by the way. Yeah. And spoiler, episode 32 might show up again on this list. Yeah, so Dragon Quest XI, tremendous, tremendous game. One of my favourite games of all time now, I guess. And yeah, one of my favourite pickups. Because Dragon Quest, my first experience with a brand new one. So yeah, truly something special for me. Number seven. Going all the way back to episode three. PlayStation Portable plus games and UMDs. So I'm just going to uh, <clears throat> place those there. All right. Yeah, so episode three, obviously quite old now. Um, when I uh, got into retro game collecting and just collecting in general, the PlayStation Portable still didn't interest me that much. It wasn't until a few years later, Metal Jesus Rocks did a, uh, a video showcasing the PSP and I fell in love with the system, so I had to buy one. So I did. I got the uh, the PSP uh, 3000 edition, which uh, is supposedly the best one. Some people will say the second one, but whatever. Yeah, it's got a nice screen sound and a little uh, output at the bottom where you can uh, play it on your TV if you want. It's not the best because the quality is kind of crappy, it doesn't go full screen or anything, but it is there, it's very good, helps uh, to record uh, game footage of course. Um, yeah, and of course you can connect it to your PS2 for certain things, you can connect it to the PS3 and download games off it and things, you can play PS1 games on it. And yeah, I love this little handheld, it is fantastic. I really like the design of it, would have been better obviously with two analog sticks, maybe another set of shoulder buttons, but what are you going to do? What counts is the games that were on it, and there are a ton. I got a bunch when I first bought it, I just sort of went all out, bought the system and a bundle of games and UMD movies as well. Yes, you could get films on it, and they come on these nice little discs that go in here. Yeah, and I just adore the system, so let's just have a quick rundown of what games that I showed off in episode 3. And then the movie show, we had uh, KO Challengers, the... Uh, yeah, let's see. I think it's the uh, the second game, but just sort of put onto the um, 
the PSP and name differently or something like that. Yeah, that was weird. Uh, we have Little Big Planet on the handheld. Honestly, not a big fan of that game at all. So we have um, uh, Daxter. Yes, Jack and Daxter. It is the spin-off. Uh, I think it takes place between the first and second game and shows uh, what happens uh, to Daxter while Jax has been captured. Ratchet and Clank, Size Matters, the Ratchet and Clank game. This also, I believe, got a port to the uh, the PlayStation 2. Fun. And then we have Secret Agent Clank, a spin-off with just Clank, of course, the robot. Very fun. Then we have Gangs of London. I think this was kind of like a GTA style game. You know, opening world, you know, gang shooting things. I haven't really put any time into that. Some people say it's really good and a hidden gem. Others say it's absolutely terrible. Don't know what to believe. Dragon Ball Z, Shin Budokai, really fun game, decent fighting, fun uh, stories and what ifs and things I think in this one, yeah, that was fun. Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, this was awesome because it went back to the old um, overhead view from the original games, uh, from you know, 1, 2 and London, so that was awesome. I'll save that one for last. Twisted Metal Head On, the true sequel and successor to Twisted Metal 2, the greatest Twisted Metal game. This looks and plays just like it, and it is far better than Twisted Metal Black, in my opinion. I know, crazy, right? But I love this game. Fantastic. Uh, Smackdown vs. Raw 2006, one of my favourite wrestling games. Now it's portable. Everything is included there. I think the only thing we're missing is some... Um, voices during the story mode there are a lot in it but i think there's some missing and they included a couple of random mini games as well so yeah really fun fantastic game on portable if you link this up to the ps2 with the ps2 version you unlock uh, jake the snake roberts i believe so that was really cool and lastly the game that kind of changed <laughs> me in a lot of ways because this series blew me away and i still love it to this day and that was the legend of heroes Trails in the Sky, the first one. Oh boy, Th this could have made the list all on its own, but decided to throw in the PSP as well. Yeah. And then, of course, we got some UMD films. So we got wrestling ones, we got uh, Chris Benoit, Hard Knocks documentary there, we got the self destruction of the Ultimate Warrior documentary. Uh, we have Tombstone, History of the Undertaker. We took a three disc set, put it onto a UMD disc, and we got a whole four matches. <laughs> RVD, one of a kind. I think that's a documentary as well. A couple of matches as well, I think, on the other sets. Um, WrestleMania 24, the only WrestleMania released, and it's a two disc set as well, which is kind of unique. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the Monday Night War, that was a documentary looking at WCW versus WWF back in the day. Brett the Hitman Hart, best of is, best of was, best of ever will be. Uh, documentary, maybe a couple of matches thrown on there as well. And we've got some actual films. We have Donnie Brasco, fantastic mafia film, love that, based on a true story. We have 2004's The Punisher, my favourite uh, Punisher film, the series is obviously fantastic. Uh, it's not the uh, the extended edition, unfortunately, but yep, still a really good film in my opinion. And the original Terminator. Unfortunately, uh, Terminator 2, incredibly rare, incredibly expensive, Region 2. Yeah, so those were, from episode 3, PSP, games and movies. What a wonderful pickup that was. Number 6. Yeah, it's Dragon Quest again. I did say that Dragon Quest XI was not the only one on the list. So this is from, if I just look at my notes, episode 40. And it is Dragon Quest... Mario died. Look at his leg. Look at him, the poor bugger. Yeah, I don't even think an extra life mushroom's gonna fix that, mate. Ugh. Okay, sit further back. No fall. Alright. <laughs> Where were we? Dragon Quest V from episode 40 on the Nintendo DS. Obviously it originally came out the Super Nintendo. We never got it in English back then. It even got a PS2 release. Also not in English. Did it come out on PS1 as well? I don't remember. But yeah. Dragon Quest V, uh, Hand of the Heavenly Bride. Yes. It is often put up there as one of the very best Dragon Quest games. 
So of course when I got into the series I wanted to play it. Except this one was always very expensive. The other ones at the time were fairly cheap. They, they've all shot up in price now. But this one was always expensive when I started getting into the series. So it took me a while to get hold of this one. And in fact, uh, a famous story I've told many times on this channel when I went to the uh, gaming market in Doncaster a few years ago. I saw this and I wasn't sure at first if I was going to pick it up because of the price. So I walked around to see if I could find it cheaper. Got to sort of, I'm ready to go home. It's like, no, nah, I'm going to go and pick it up. So I rushed to the stall that it was on, picked it up, handed over the cash, got home. When I got home, uh, I was showing my mum what I'd bought. And when I pulled this out, it was Dragon Quest IV, which I already owned. And I paid a bit too much for it because I thought it was Dragon Quest V. Fail! Yeah, so I had to buy this, not again, but technically it was for the first time. And it was brand new and sealed. It is the US version, so you got the thin black case, but I don't care about that. It's English, DS, you know, the region free plays them fine. So it was brand new, it was sealed, and it was supposed to be £70, uh, but I had an Amazon voucher for £40, so yeah, it cost me considerably less. And got it brand new, sealed, and it, yeah, it is fantastic, it is one of the best Dragon Quest games. So I was so happy to finally own it, I even got a brand new sealed copy, which was awesome. I got it nice and cheap compared to what it should have been, because of that free Amazon voucher art. Yeah, and yeah, it's a tremendous game. Probably top three Dragon Quest games, just off the top of my head. Maybe, f yeah, top three, I think. It is fantastic anyway. If you get the chance to play it, for the love of God, play it. It is an amazing game. It's very depressing in a lot of ways. The main character goes through some real shit in it, but it's really fun. It goes through a long time period from when he was a kid to an adult. Lots of stuff, crazy things happen in between. There are lots of big story choices that affect how the game continues on and ends. Yep, so uh, definitely worth picking up. An amazing pickup for me personally. Number five. So, I already mentioned uh, earlier with Twister Metal Head On that the best Twister Metal is Twister Metal 2. And of course, that was on PlayStation 1. Twister Metal 3 and Twister Metal 4 came out on PS1 and they were not good. They changed uh, developers and, oh boy, they just did not live up to what Twister Metal 2 was. However, there was another game on PlayStation 1. Now, 3 and 4 never came out here in Europe, so... Yeah, I don't own them at the moment because they are expensive. I do want them for the collection. Yeah, but a lot of people still knew of them. It was kind of easy to get hold of them over here with copies. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, a bit of sore throat there. It was quite easy for people to get hold of them through various means. But there was another one that a lot of people just didn't know about because I think it came out a little bit later. People were sort of kind of moving on to PlayStation 2 at this point, maybe. Uh, or maybe they just got tired of the series because 3 and 4 were crap. Not me. I picked this one up. <coughs> Excuse me. I picked this one up back in the day, uh, not quite uh, legally, and I had a blast with it. So when I had the chance to pick this one up, um, an original copy, um, obviously imported from America, it cost me not as much as I was expecting, so I got a good price on it. Uh, this was, by the way, from ooh, episode 9. Yeah. So happy to have added this to my collection. It is Twisted Metal Small Brawl on the PlayStation 1. So what this one does with the series is you still have all the classic vehicles that you would expect, a couple of new ones as well, but the drivers are different. Instead of them being, you know, actual people driving these cars, it is a bunch of kids driving RC cars, essentially, in real-life locations. So you're really small, locations, and normal size. I love that stuff, you know, when you're playing as, like, toys, like Toy Story 2, amazing. So, yeah, you're basically playing RC car twisted metal, and it is awesome. The locations are fantastic. It looks, controls, and plays basically like Twisted Metal 2. Yeah, I always had a blast with this one. I do have some issues recording footage of it though. I just can't seem to get it done properly. I've tried emulate it, uh, the PS1 Classic, put the thing on there, run it through the PlayStation 2, um, with region 3 mod and things, and it always just plays in slow motion, and I don't understand it. Or if it plays in full speed, it records in slow motion. It baffles me, and it's the only American game that does that for me. But yeah. 
fantastic game. I can play it perfectly fine, I just can't record footage of it at the moment because one day I do want to do a video on this because it is, in my opinion, a genuine hidden gem. Because not a lot of people still know about it, I'll just completely pass it up because it was Twisted Metal after Twisted Metal 2. Nobody really cared yet, but this is a wonderful, wonderful game. The fact that it didn't come out in Europe is a big kick in the balls, but yeah, I finally got the American copy. I finally own it, an original version of it now, and I'm so, so happy. I love you, Twisted Metal. I love you too, Carl. You're the best. I know, but you're pretty good too. Yeah, but I'm not Twisted Metal 2 World Tour. Well, that's true, but what game is? You're really good for being you. Yeah, that's true. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. Number four. How should I describe this one? Uh, so it's from episode 14. Yoshi! That'll do. Yoshi's Woolly World on Nintendo Wii U. And it's the, uh, the special edition that comes with a green Yan Yoshi amiibo. And it is adorable. Look at the Yoshi! He's made of wool! Look at the Yoshi! Yeah, so I got this for my birthday from my best friends, so thank you once again. This was obviously many years ago. And this... Uh, this game is just tremendous. I adore this. It is one of my favourites of that entire generation, you know, spanning sort of, you know, PS3, Xbox 360, PC, 3DS, DS, Wii, Wii U, whatever. It was confusing because the Wii U sort of came out in the middle of generations. But yeah, it is just such... An amazing game, so I was so happy to have got this and added it obviously to my pickups video. It's an incredible game, it just looks amazing. It was obviously the first um, HD system from Nintendo, everything was sort of made out of yarn and wool and whatever, and it just to this day the, the visuals stand up amazingly. The gameplay is top notch, just incredible. The soundtrack is superb. It's just everything about that game I adore. I have done a full video review on this actually. One of my favourite videos I've done. I think I really did the game justice in that. It's not. I'll do a lot of videos and often after I've sort of put them out it's like I could have done this, I should have said that, why did I do that? But with this one I think I got everything across that I wanted to, showed the game exactly how it should have been shown. Yeah, an amazing game. I was so happy to add this to my collection. It is just fantastic. And honestly, I would love to see a Switch port of it. I know people are like, oh, Wii U games to Switch port, you know, it's a pain in the ass. And yeah, it kind of sucks for me because I own the Wii U. I have almost all the Wii U games worth owning. And Switch has kind of been lacking as of late in original games. We keep getting ports. And yeah, it's a bit iffy. But this is definitely one I would love to see on Switch with the improved visuals, which would be outstanding. And more people would finally get to play it. Yeah, it came out on the 3DS, but obviously that version's on a handheld. It's not quite as nice. But yeah, this one. Please give Switch port. Amazing game. Me like it lots. Number three. Uh, going back again to the PSP uh, listing. Uh, there was one game there in particular that I really highlighted. And that was The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. And that series was just fantastically wonderful. Loved the first game. Loved the second game. Third game exists. It, it's decent enough, but it kind of feels like a side piece rather than a, a sequel sort of thing. But yeah. And then I found out that the series continued on with a sort of a new series, but still had to hear the lore and the world building of the other games and everything would tie in. And that was, of course... Trails of Cold Steel. The first one here, the PlayStation 4 version, it did come out on PS3 as well, 1 and 2 did, and I do own them digitally, but I never got around to playing them. And then I finally just forked out for the PS4 version, I got here the uh, uh, Decisive Edition, which came with some goodies in this big box, and yeah, this was the start of my epic love affair with the Legend of Heroes Trails series. It is truly amazing. I've just finished up playing Trails of Cold Steel 4 for the second time, but the first time on the Switch. I've played through 1 and 2 twice now. I've played through 3, 3 times, and the fourth one twice. And I just, I just cannot get enough of this series. I cannot wait for the uh, the next ones. The um, ones already out in Japan, the other one's been announced. I can't wait for them to come out in English, hopefully, eventually. 
then we have the uh, the cross spell arc the two games uh, they've never come out in english but uh, geofront has done an amazing job with the fan translation of trails from zero trails to azure the sequel is coming out any day now it's coming out this month i cannot wait to play that i really want to play it. but yeah trails of cold steel it took what I loved with uh, Trails in the Sky and just amped everything up. It gave me more and more and more. And I, I may now love the Trails of Cold Steel uh, 4 games over the Trails in the Sky trilogy a little bit. Ugh, I just can't get enough of this series. I want more of it. It is tremendously, fantastically, awesomely amazing. Uh, episode 41, by the way, is where this came from. Yeah, I... Uh, <sighs> Yeah, so finally picking this up and finally getting around to play it, despite, like I said, I owned the digital version on PS3 for years. And for some reason, I just never got around to starting it, because I thought, yeah, it's Trails in the uh, uh, Legend of Heroes game, but I was expecting it to be sort of completely different. I didn't realise it connected and tied in so much to the Trails in the Sky games. If I did know that, I probably would have played it through on PS3. But I'm glad I did get the PS4 version as well, they're being enhanced and things visually. The speed mode, we, you can um, you know play through it a lot faster, it was so much better. Um, it's too slow on PS3 for my liking, so the PS4 version was where to go. Lovely pickup, wonderful pickup, absolutely adore this game and the series that followed. Number 2. So, for number 2, we are going all the way back to episode one, the very first recent video games pickups video I ever did. And I'm also um, have two games here because they were both included and they both you know joined together. I'm sure you've guessed it already if you remember what the hell was in episode one. Probably don't. That was a long time ago. But yeah. Dragon Quest six and Dragon Quest nine on the Nintendo DS. These were the first two Dragon Quest games I ever played. Bought them at the same time, they were brand new sealed, I got them from Argos over here. Every so often they sort of do these crazy sales and it, they, they were like £7 and £9 brand new and sealed. Good luck getting these for that kind of price these days, even pre-owned obviously. So I played Dragon Quest VI first, of course. It was a, um, a reimagining of the uh, the Super Nintendo game. It had some nicer graphics now, a couple of extra features. People will still sort of say that the SNES versions have some things over this version that this version doesn't have. Whatever. I adored it. Fantastic story, incredible gameplay. And then, of course, Dragon Quest IX was purposely built for the DS, so this was the closest to a new game that I got to play with Dragon Quest before Eleven came out. It had already been out a few years before I bought it, and it was obviously in 3D now, so we've gone from the 2D 16-bit style to a proper 3D one. That was my first experience with that, and it still played and looked and sounded fantastic. I kind of wish I got it brand new, because there was a whole online thing with like um, treasure maps and caves and things, uh, so I did miss out on some of the content in it, which is kind of disappointing. But the standard base game without any online is still incredible. Great story. Loved this. Loved them so much that at the time my original DS kind of broke. The hinge broke on it. I'm sure a lot of you are aware of that happening. Mine didn't break through tear, you know, wear and tear. I accidentally dropped mine and a chunk of plastic from the hinge broke off. And over time the rest of the hinge would just fall off. And you literally have the top screen and the bottom screen held together with the ribbon cable. I played through both of these games. 60 hours, I think, for Dragon Quest VI. About 50 hours for Dragon Quest IX. With the broken DS, I would have to hold the top screen up while I played the game. These were so fantastic that I suffered through playing both of them for that length of time with a broken DS. Yeah, so once I got started with these, that's where I fell in love with the Dragon Quest series. Yeah, I finally played all the mainline games, you know, 1 to 11 minus 10, because that's never come out in English. I finally played through all of those uh, last year. I finally got around to playing them all. Got a bunch of the spin-offs that I played as well, the Dragon Quest Monsters games. 
uh, the Drunk Quest Builders, adore the series and it all started episode one of recent video game pickups with these two beauties. <sighs> so that only leaves one question then. What the hell is number one? Number one. <sighs> Nintendo Switching Games! Of course it had to have been. So this was from, for look at my list, episode 32. Remember I did say that that might come up again. This was in the same episode with Dragon Quest XI on the PS4, which might very well make it the single greatest recent video game pickups video of all time due to what was in it. Yeah, so the Switch had been out for a year before I finally was able to get one. Uh, got it uh, for my birthday, although I got it a month early. Um, it was a birthday present, uh, well half of it was a birthday present uh, for my 30th birthday, the other half I had to pay for. This is what it is, you know, uh, still very, very happy. Um, so yeah, I got that and a bundle of games. Now, not all the games uh, were out at the time, but when I got around to doing a video on it, this is what was out. So with the system, I got L.A. Noir. Yep, uh, made from uh, Rockstar and you know, it's you know, GTA but if you were a detective basically you go around and you have all the facial things you have to you know, watch out to see if people are lying very interesting, very cool to have on a handheld of course Super Mario Odyssey had to pick up you know, the, the big 3D platformer for the system of course and this is currently just sort of tied with Super Mario World is my absolute favourite Mario game it is just incredible love that to death so I had those two games from the start and then I bought a few other games afterwards and my birthday was the next month my friends bought me Mario Kart 8 Deluxe I'd already got the Wii version the Wii U version sorry I pre-ordered a bundle with the Wii U with Mario Kart 8 so I got Mario Kart 8 on launch on the Wii U I'd played it to death on that system still playing it to death now on the Switch so much so the cartridge isn't in the box because it's currently in the Switch because I still play it all the time now and with you know, due to Covid and things me and my friends finally got around to uh, playing online against each other. We'd set up a voice chat on Discord and we'd play online on Mario Kart 8 and have an absolute blast. It is the best Mario Kart game in my opinion and the deluxe version was just perfection. So that was awesome to get. A game that I hinted to all my friends that I wanted for my birthday, they didn't get me because they got me Mario Kart 8 because you know, they wanted the whole let's play together thing, which I understand, so I had to buy myself this one. Dragon Quest Builders. It's Minecraft with an actual purpose, basically. And I wasn't sure I was going to like it, but I downloaded the demo on the Switch and when the demo ended, I desperately wanted to play more. The sign of a good demo and a good game. So I picked up the full version and it is tremendous. The sequel is even better though. And lastly, a game that I got when it came out, pre-ordered it, and a lot of people had trouble getting this when it first came out because it seemed to be a limited stock. I'm not sure they, they realised it was going to be as popular as it was. And that is Octopath Traveler, this amazing JRPG from Square Enix with this uh, HD 2D style that they've sort of created now. Incredible. Eight different stories, eight different characters, only the same world, choose who you want to play as, and when you want to play as them, switch on the fly, go to different people, do part of their story, move on to the next person. The only thing is they don't really connect properly, which is a bit of a shame, but apart from that, wonderful, wonderful game. So, yeah. And of course, the Nintendo Switch itself, just as a console, has become one of my absolute favourites. I play it all the time. When it comes to multi-platform games now, on PS4 and whatnot, I do tend to go with the Switch version if I can because I just love the Switch and being able to play in handheld mode is a plus as well as on the TV. Amazing. The games here you can only see uh, a few piles have amassed uh, a good amount. I think nearly 60 or maybe more. I don't know. I haven't counted for a while. Um, Switch games for a system that's still in its original life cycle. This is the quickest I've ever built up a collection like this for a system like that. You know, back with the PS1 days, it was all copies unfortunately, the Nintendo Wii, I still added a, an okay amount, uh, but again, soft modded the Wii and things like that. PS4, uh, I have a decent sized library, 
Oh, hello, Ducky. How are we doing? A visitor. Hello. Yeah, but I've never built up a library this quickly, this size, for a system that is currently out. Because I just love buying games for this system. It is incredible. And that is why it is my number one favourite pickup from the first 50 recent video games pickups videos. Whew. So, I'm Big Cal. Thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of my top 10. Let me know if there's any that you thought would have been in my top 10 that I missed out. And uh, continue watching, hopefully, my recent video game pickups videos. I'll be back with another top 10 after the next 50 of them when I get to 100. So, I'll see you again for whatever the next video is next time.